everyone. Thank you for stopping by. It's Carol at Oak House Journals. Lovely to have you with me today. So it's a lovely sunny day here in the UK. Beautiful spring day. It really feels like, oh, all's right with the world today. Seeing a bit of sunshine and seeing the flowers outside my window here. The downside, unfortunately, is the lawnmowers are out. So you'll probably hear that in the background. So I do apologise about that. Um, as you can see, I've got my prompts here for week 14 of Marguerite Miller's Collage Weekly uh, Challenge for 2024. And these are the pieces that I've pulled out to use. So the first prompt is something you see through a window. Well, immediately in front of me, I see my garden. Something like that. A little bit more flowery at the moment as the daffs and hellebores are out. So I've got this image that I printed from a photo this morning. So I'm going to be using that. That. I've also got some handmade paper here with some flower images, abstract flower images on it. And the reason I've lifted this out as well is that this is quite a vivid green and um, I'm not sure if that isn't going to be too bright on my piece. So I thought maybe I could maybe mute it down a little bit with this handmade paper. I don't know yet. I haven't really got an idea for where my collage is going to be placed today. I've just lifted out my pieces. Sometimes I have an, a rough idea of where I'm going to go with it, um, but not today. <laughs> so I'm hoping it won't be a long video for you. So I've got those two pieces for the first prompt. And I also thought it might be nice to actually put a window on my collage today. So I've got two church windows here that I've just printed out and inked up. The next prompt or prompt number two is something with wheels. Well, I've got this little antique truck or toy truck here. So I'm going to use that. A map this is an old vintage map and the reason I've chosen that is because one of the prompts is um, to have a touch of orange and I thought this would blend in with that prompt the next prompt prompt number four something that uses electricity well I saw this quirky lamp it's supposed to be a, a toucan I believe holding a light bulb and I thought I'd use this one because there is a bit of a, an orangey glow on his chest and I thought that would work in well with the other prompts and this is the key prompt something with a bit of orange well I've got his stomach a little bit on there these bagels which have this gorgeous orange glow to them and that's just an image that came out of a book I've got these peaches which are orange and this was an image out of uh, Daphne's diary ages ago and I also have this piece of uh, grease proof paper or deli paper rather that um, has got some orange on it from some gel printing that I did so lots of options there and then the final prompt the bonus prompt is a name well I've got this bottom portion from an old indenture and as you can see the seals are it's still in place this is folded over and there's a few signatures on here. The one I think might be best is perhaps this long one down here, although I am loving this reddy orange line in this background piece here. And I think that might go nicely on my piece as well. I'm not gonna use the seals unless I feel a desperate urge to as things progress, but um, I'm certainly gonna use one of those signatures. And as always, I've got my background piece of um, paper here to work on. So prompts up in front of me as always. I always start with my largest piece. Now I have cut this down to the um, size of my working area. So let's get that in place. Not Apologies everyone, I've had to go into voiceover mode here. So as I mentioned before, I've got my vintage matte paper cut to size to fit on my working background. I've got my garden image center stage on my page and I'm just seeing if those two window frames will sit side by side uh, against that garden image and it works perfectly. So I've got my little truck there and I'm thinking that I will put that on the garden image half on and half off so that it looks like that's in the background too. Here I'm just playing with that handmade paper, really wanted to try and get that in, just for added texture really. So I'm playing with it here to sort of hide half of the garden image 
um, with the thoughts that I might just use one of those window frames but you'll see in a moment that I discard that idea and go back to using the two frames together. So I've definitely decided I'm going to use my vintage MacBook paper so I go ahead and glue that in place. Here's my garden image coming back into play and here are my two frames and they fit perfectly by pure chance side by side on that image and at this point in the proceedings I'm thinking that I will have the frame um, bottom lined up with the bottom of the garden image but it's almost losing the top detail of the frame so I, I do come up with a plan to to help that stand out a little better so here I am going in with that deli paper um, it's very very bright <laughs> I'm trying to reduce the size a little bit so I'm putting a fold in it and just slipping it underneath And the vibrancy of that green is actually bouncing against that orange. So I'm not averse to using that deli paper. Um, although you will see in due course that I flip it over and actually use a little bit of the more muted side. Because I've um, moved the window frames up a little, I can ground my toucan not on the frames but actually on the um, bottom of the garden image. So here I'm just narrowing down uh, the width of that deli paper. Putting my pieces back in place to see how they look. And here you can see me arranging the frames a lot higher so that they're actually over the top of the um, garden image and onto the matte paper and I've just used the fold that I created in that deli paper to actually um, fold over the bottom of the garden image and here I'm just playing with the bagel orange bagels and I actually decided I liked it so I was going to go with that so here I am finally gluing down my vintage matte paper to my working cardstock. Just giving it a burnish and adjusting it. And then I decide that I don't like the white edges on those uh, window frames. I cut them all out by hand, fussy cut them. So I have white edges, so I'm just using a Faber-Castell um, big brush pen to get rid of the white edges. Once again arranging my pieces on my page. And where I folded up that um, orange deli paper I'm lining up my frames with that. And I think that's working quite well. Just popping in a um, paper clip to hold it in place. As I'm always saying I need a million and one hands when I'm doing these uh, these collages. So just making sure it's how I want it there. Okay, my bagels need trimming down a little bit. I've got a fold there and I'm just fold, folding it in half again and just trimming it away. There we go, there's the two pieces. What I'm trying to get is the orange from the bagels and also that brown um, darkness at the bottom and as you can see my toucan is sat quite nicely on the bagels there it almost looks like he's grounded which is which is good here I'm just trying to decide which of the names on that indenture paper I want to use there are two on this portion that I'm, I'm ripping away and in the end I, I use both of them um, my first thought was that I would go with the longer of the two. Here I'm just seeing if it looks nice on top of the garden image. Decide I don't like that. So um, go back to my original idea, which was to pop it behind somewhere. I've glued the top of my first window frame in place. 
Um, I'm just doing the same with the second one here. I'm not gluing the bottom portion as yet because I want to get my little truck behind that. So just dabbing it into place. And here's my little truck, half in and half off the garden image. I'm putting some glue on the back of my donut strip. Not a donut strip, sorry, bagel strip. <laughs> Just try to tuck it underneath the frame. There we go. Decide it's not quite level at the bottom. So I'm just going to give it a quick straighten. Here I'm just faffing and trying to position that little truck in place behind the uh, window frame. Trying to decide how I like it. Liking it there, so I'm going in to add some glue. And now I can go in and glue down the bottom portion of my frames. Just using our glitter glue and a very thin line down each of the struts of the frames and along the bottom and just gently easing it into place. So here I'm positioning the toucan on top of one of the bagels and I also decide that I want to break up that bottom right hand corner so I add the um, peaches. So gluing those in place and now a touch of glue underneath my toucan again to hold him in place. So that's all my main pieces glued in place. I now need to decide which name I'm going to use uh, and where to place it for my final prompt. I think this was the bonus prompt. So I've got a portion and I'm just testing it down the side and actually quite liking the look of it down there but originally I thought I would tuck it at a at the top and I'm just playing with the two names to see which which one I might like up there but I'm not really liking either of them if I'm honest. It occurs to me that it might be nice to trim the garden image away so that the corners follow the line of the uh, window frame so that's what I'm doing there and then I'm going back in and playing around again with the names and I decide I like the two names ripped apart and put down the right hand side of my collage. So that's what I'm doing now. They're positioned in place and I'm just adding a dab of glue. And this is the second name going in. There we go. And here I'm playing with those red lines that were on the indenture paper as well. I mentioned those at the start of the video and I'm just playing here to see if, or auditioning them here rather, to see if they'll look nice down the left hand side of my page. If you look underneath the top points of the window frames you'll see that I've already added a portion there. I just felt it needed something up there. Uh, to soften the transition onto the matte paper and I felt that that helped and that's more or less why I've decided to put a portion of this red lined indenture paper down the uh, left hand side. It was a little bit fiddly because it kept moving but I eventually managed to, to do it and that was the final piece to finish off my collage. Here's my finished piece everybody for this week's assignment, assignment number 14 and quickly going through the prompts. Something you see through a window, well I've got my two window frames here and what you're seeing through the window is my image of a garden. Something with wheels, I've got my little truck here and I tried to make it appear as if the truck was also being seen through the windows and I know that he's coming off the page here but I wanted it to um, uh, have give that impression that he was exiting, <laughs> exiting stage one as they say. Um, a map 
well I've got my um, German map here, a vintage German map and I chose that one particularly as I've said previously because of the hints of orange and ready tones on it. Something that uses electricity, I've got my Toucan lamp down here. Something with a bit of orange, well I didn't use bit as in a small amount because I've got quite um, a heavy chunk of orange on this page. I've got an orange glow on my toucan's tummy here, I've got these orange bagels and I've got these peaches down here. And the bonus prompt was a name. Well, I did use that indenture paper and I used two of the signatures down the side here to create one long name. And I also used those red lines that I showed you earlier from that indenture paper and I put a little portion up there just for a bit more interest and really to to capture your eye and, and bring it up to the top and drag it away from the bottom. And I've also used a little bit down the side here, um, almost to pick up the rule of three really, um, for the simple reason that I've got red in the background, red down here and obviously red at the, the bottom. So I'm hoping that works. Um, I didn't find it an easy one to do this week. I mean, I never find these particularly easy, but what I do find is that the more I do these and the more regular I am in doing them, the better they come together and the happier I am with the overall composition. I pre-recorded a couple of my earlier um, videos whilst we were away house hunting um, and I haven't done one for about three weeks now and I was really struggling with this. It wasn't coming together, but I still enjoyed it and I love doing these. I love the journey and I really do appreciate your company. So until the next video, everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. As always, photographs for you to have a closer look at at the end and I'll see you again soon. So until then, take care. Bye bye now.